What's going on? I am Skylar Davis, owner of Culture Shock Clothing and Records here in Rockford, Illinois. And you can also find us and these records at cultureshockshop.com. We will post the link in the video to the records we're talking about tonight. As you know, every week we like to do a vinyl happy hour video. And that's what's going on right now. We are right in the sweet spot, right over the halfway point of season four, four years of doing this. And showing off and talking to you and sharing what's limited and what's special about some of the special releases that are coming out every week. We have made it through a very sweet record store day and it was amazing, but there's been lots of other great releases and indie store releases and limited reissues coming out that it's very easy to miss out on with all the hype and all the other stuff going on. So we're gonna get right into it guys. I'm drinking a little bit of a Cody Road Maple. This is a Cody Road bourbon with some actual Iowa maple syrup added. We had the honor of visiting uh, Mississippi Distilling Company a while back and Lauren actually picked this one out surprising because it's a little sweeter than what she usually enjoys but I love it and I love the sweeter stuff and I like it a little smoky got just a nice little bit of wood with a little bit of maple syrup it's a great whiskey um I'm really excited because the first release I want to bring up is AFI Bodies I don't know if many of you know this, but AFI is one of my favorite bands of all times. I don't know how, I've just always been with them as they've changed over their career. Also a huge fan of Nine Snails, lots of other bands, but this is up there. Between the Buried and Me too. speaking of which, Colors 2 is coming out. I should mention that not only do we have links to the records that are currently available in our store, and of course you can pick them up in our store, but you can pre-order upcoming releases. So some people had already pre-ordered AFI, Luckily, it isn't sold out yet, so you can still get this album. But that Between the Varied and Me, speaking of another favorite band, we are taking pre-orders for Colors 2. So check out the pre-order section of our site, too, when you're checking out our links below. Also, if you love what I'm doing and love my excitement for this hobby, passion, business, career, whatever crazy business I'm in dealing with records, uh, please like this video. We'd love for it to pop up and be shared with other vinyl enthusiasts. And share, share a comment, share a story about what you got for Record Store Day and some stuff like that, please, with us. Um, one interesting thing about the package before I talk about the vinyl is the new AFI Bodies album came with this little sticker, it's different barcode, because this is the Indie Store exclusive. This variant is only available to independent Record Store Days. So it's the black, gray, and silver tricolor, and they got this really nice kind of holographic sticker showing that off. But for me, as a record flipper, not person just finding things online, in the record store, I love this kind of like almost reverse Obi strip. So the AFI Bodies strip that came on the album, which usually you see on the side of the album, is on top. And it also gives the track listing on the back as well. Uh, but I just love that that was on top. So when you're looking through the record crates, super easy to find. And it removes so you have just the artwork of the jacket too. Um, there's It's called Bodies, so there's like little drawings of kind of some spot color little bodies and kind of like some creatured humans throughout. It's probably hard to see on camera, but in person at your local record store or when we mail it to you will be the best. But each little outline person is kind of the spot gloss, glossy print. And it does have the AFI bodies on the spine. And you've got little sketch drawings of the band inside and all the lyrics. It's a nice, pretty thick gatefold, not the thickest, heaviest duty one. Printed inner sleeve as well, super nice. Here's kind of the artwork that's on the jacket. Uh, in larger form on the inner sleeve. That's just repeated throughout. Probably harder to see, maybe easy to see on the label, but this reminds me of AFI's December Underground because of the, the three rabbits that were kind of going in the circle. So if you can see that center label, the bodies are all kind of going in that rotational direction. And keeping in theme with the three bodies artwork, this is tricolor vinyl. So it might be harder to see on camera, but you have a black section, gray section, and a kind of translucent gray section. So a really cool kind of color combination, great artwork goes with the album. The album, I don't sense it going in threes. There is definitely some more serious songs, but they still have some great dancey, very rhythmic songs too. Obviously AFI started out as more of like a hardcore punk band and they've evolved so much, have become so much more melodic, electronic, yada yada, stuff like that. I love the album. Obviously they're continuing embracing that change that they've taken as they've grown up and I, they can't do, they haven't done anything wrong yet. That's for sure. I love the, the direction of the album. I still love their punk era and it's definitely a different band almost, but I still like what they've done here. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about Folklore. Finally, available on vinyl at your independent record stores as well. Taylor Swift's Folklore came out, uh, well, this was like one of the first albums to kind of roll out of the pandemic. I think July, about a year ago is when it actually came out. She had been working on this and she was probably one of the biggest artists to drop a nice big full album that had been recorded in quarantine. And this had a lot of, uh, a lot of critical reviews, mostly good. It has really great reviews actually. It's great music, a big change for Taylor Swift. I will mention that this is on beige vinyl. So it is a different version, but a lot of people were talking about the forestry and the look of it. And I'm gonna talk about the next album, but some people said it almost looked like uh, Swedish folk or black metal album and what's really interesting too is she actually worked with some new uh, production on this and some new producers and songwriters because Aaron Dessner of The National really stepped in to really help this album take a new direction and a new sound for her. Uh, it's also featuring Bon Iver on the Exile song which is probably one of the most well-known songs from the album and that's when we knew she was definitely going in a new direction. I think that was one of the first singles I heard from this but it is a very long album and it does change from there. Uh, but let's also talk about Jack Antonoff from the Bleachers, also helped write the album and produce the album. She's coming back to stores finally. I was kind of salty with her for a minute because her stuff was only available on her own website or this big chain store with the red circles in their name. We won't mention names of stores, but I joke, I tease. Finally, it's available at stores. And I think the beige color is fitting for this album. It is kind of a more uh, a more grounded album and a little bit more of a serious album and like I said it, I think it really helped influence a lot of other artists also going through the pandemic as to how they would work with other artists. Um, so anyway that's available also Evermore came out on color vinyl too finally available at regular record stores as well not just on her website or big chains but we were mentioning Bleachers guess what they have a brand new album out it's out this weekend actually so this is Take the Sadness Out of Saturday Night and what's really interesting about their new album, and mentioning Jack Antonoff actually, who helped work on this album, their album's out this weekend too. This is the Indie Store variant. So you're not gonna recognize this artwork if you've ordered a different version of the album or see a different album in our store or even streaming. The artwork being used is the picture with um, the person's head on it. So this is only available at independent record stores. Really great gold foil artwork on it too, gold border. And it comes with a booklet, nice thick gatefold. Also interesting to see other artists working with other artists through this pandemic and stuff like that because they started this, I think, back in 2019. So this has been a long time coming. Obviously, they've been working on some other projects and recording in this format probably takes longer. But Chinatown features Bruce Springsteen on it. So that's a pretty interesting person to be working with and an indie store exclusive. So just wanted to show that off and mention that this is why you're seeing different artwork. It's not a different version of the album or different music. It's the same music, but it comes with a booklet and different artwork. So I'm gonna keep this Taylor Swift album out for a second because one of the first things I thought about when I saw this album and saw the picture of her kind of forlorn looking in the trees there and stuff like that, I thought of Opeth. And this is the 20th anniversary of Blackwater Park and I just think that it's totally, look at these guys in the woods and forests and stuff like that. And I was like, oh yeah, this is funny how everyone was talking about how, oh yeah, Taylor Swift, is she doing a black metal thing now? Doing the folk of the Swedish bands? So it's kind of funny that that was mentioned. But this is a Swedish prog doom classic album, 20 years old now. Again, seeing the images of these guys reminds me more of like early Black Sabbath. But check out this vinyl. They're calling it black and white marble or something, but it's very smoky. It's semi-translucent. Um, so you can see through only parts of it though. So this is very milky black and gray. Ooh, I left something in here as a reminder. I need to talk about something that's been happening on a lot of records. We always talk about giving you little updates on equipment and how to treat your record player. There's a big old, let's call it a big old plastic booger or something here in the middle of this hole. That is gonna be very hard to put on your record player. See right here in the middle? That is sometimes happening on a lot of new records where they punch it out or cut it out. It doesn't quite make it through all the paper or through all the plastic and vinyl. So when you go to put on your record player, it's sitting on the up part of the spindle and it's wobbling and people are thinking their records are skipping or it's broken or damaged. So if you can't push this all the way down, I don't have a record player handy 
But if your spindle doesn't go through the hole and hold your record in place, or it's being up here crooked, you're gonna get wobble and skipping and other problems too. It might even sound like, you know, roller wheel, roller wheel or something like it's going up and down in speed. So very, very carefully use a tiny screwdriver, the edge of, I use the edge of my keys, knife, scissors, careful not to scratch your record, obviously. And be careful that wherever these little pieces of plastic and junk come out, it doesn't go back in the record or in the sleeve because you don't want to scratch your grooves. So I left that in there. Thankfully, I remembered because I roll pretty live on these videos for Vinyl Happy Hour, if you couldn't tell. I don't run with notes. I don't do a lot of edits or anything like that. So this is a double LP though. So they have both printed inner sleeves. Great, kind of more of a proggy doom metal album. Classic Opeth. Both, each one is slightly unique. The no one is alike. Uh, but this is a great double LP. We have the link to this also below. And I only have a couple more things to mention, but there's another, a new types of packaging and a new type of record that I haven't seen done in modern history. And I wanna show that off. And it comes with a comic book, super cool. So that's gonna kind of be my feature here on our video coming up. But let me package this back up. I just thought this just came out, oddly enough, sort of the Taylor Swift. And I was like, this is kind of funny. Two very different sounding artists. But there you go. That's your Opeth Blackwater Park. There's only a couple of Opeth albums currently in print. And these are pretty limited and probably going to sell out. So this is something you can't wait on. Right now, a lot of pressing plants are having trouble just keeping up, even with big time artists. Not that Opeth isn't big, but get things when you can right now. Um, speaking of some great pressings too, this is next in the line. Blue Note is now doing their classic vinyl series. This is a classic, more of a ballad jazz piece from Dexter Gordon, Go. This is an early 60s piece, I think 61. Uh, originals obviously super hard to find. I haven't even opened this or played this one yet, but I've been so pleased with the pressings from all these Blue Note classic series and the Tone Poet series. Um, I think these ones are being done, they're mastering by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. And uh, I forgot where these ones are being pressed. I'm pretty sure they're being pressed in Germany. Uh, uh, Pala, P-A-L-L-A-S, I think it's called Palace Pressing. Their pressings are absolute great fidelity, silent. There's no background noise, no hisses, no pops, no clicks. All of these jazz pieces coming out, especially uh, the Verve and the Blue Note and stuff like that are such great sounding albums. This one is not super far out. Dexter Gordon definitely keeps it a little more toned down. This is just more of a great classic jazz piece. This is an easy one to get into. It's not very far out. So if you're just getting into jazz or if you love all the Blue Note era jazz of the 60s, this one would be good for anyone. Uh, Dexter, of course, playing tenor sax, huge tall guy. He was just a really animated player. You can hear it in the recording, actually. Uh, Sonny Clark on piano, Butch Warren bass, and Billy Higgins drums. Nice little stripped down jazz set. L always love the way that they uh, list out the guys playing and always played with the fonts and the lettering on all that classic Blue Note stuff. Um, something that was really being done also, I saw back in the 60s and 70s and sometimes into the 80s, was novelty records and things like that. Um, funny little cutouts, things in catalogs. Um, I'm kind of jumping ahead one, but this Dark Knight series, I didn't know much about it. This is the Dark Knight series. It's like the darker aspects of the DC comics. And uh, Tyler Bates, who worked in Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like that, helped put this concept together and work with a bunch of bands. So this is the main soundtrack. There is tons of bands. I have bought this and really enjoying it because of the music. You've got ma music from Mastodon. I love how this also comes off just to keep the comic artwork together. Cool little slip. But you've got music from Mastodon, Chelsea Wolf, just haunting almost industrial metal-ish music. Health with Tyler Bates featuring Chino Moreno from Deftones, very more electronic and um, metal also. Great A's, Rise Against. I mean, Man Denzel Curry, Manchester Orchestra, another great track from them, Never Ending. This is all original music. I'm not gonna list every artist. Oh, Idol, Soccer Mommy, it's hard not to. The variety and the interest of music on this soundtrack is just amazing. And these are all original songs. So kudos to Tyler Bates or DC or whoever the hell put this together, that they had the money or the creativity to help these artists come together and make original music for this. Um, again, 
you or other people may have more interest in the comic aspect of it or the collectability of that. I love it for the music. And then I happen to also love the artwork because it's kind of like heavy metal and darker versions. You almost have like the good side and the bad side, even though these are not villains, you get to see the good side and the bad side and the darker elements of some of these classic Superman and Wonder Woman and things like that. I should mention also nice thick vinyl, of course, great sounding vinyl, great artwork comes with a poster it's a double lp so there's i forgot the amount of songs there's probably 15 songs in here though but look at this poster that it comes with it's got this cool fold out poster all these little extra goodies and now they're doing beyond this double lp they're actually doing some little spin-offs so one of the songs like uh, bad luck the denzel curry song uh featuring play that boys uh <laughs> Anyway, you can get this little package combo that is a comic book with even little ads and stuff. I love that it's got, this is through Lomo Vista. So they've also done, you know, Soccer Mommy and Sylvan Esso and just a whole bunch of artists, you know. So it shows some of the other records available, but it's a regular comic book. And the song that goes along with this is this Denzel Curry track. But check this out. It's a seven inch record. Ah, it's stuck on there. Look at this. This is a playable record. It looks like a little page. Have you ever seen a flexi before? Because that's what a flexi is. So this is a playable record and it will fit nicely in a little seven inch sleeve too. It comes with its own artwork along. So this package is its own deal. This is the comic book and the single. The single is the song featured on the full length soundtrack. But I'm assuming some people are probably going to collect the full soundtrack probably to play more often. And this is the collectible comic book with a flexi record. But this is an actual piece of piece of plastic with the grooves pressed in it. This is a playable record. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually play that on your record player. Just put it on your record player and play it. Um, it's just one-sided, but flexis were very common. Like I said, this goes way back to the 60s and 70s. National Geographic, you could pull the page out. There'd be a little record in there with interviews with people from other countries or scientists talking about whales or whatever. Um, there was things in McDonald's Happy Meals, the sides of the boxes ripped apart and there's a record on it. You can go home, play on your record player, stories for movies. Um, super cool, great patching these guys did. Again, this is called the Dark Knights Death Metal Soundtrack, the DC Comics one. And each one features, you know, different art and different comic book coming out. So I don't know how many of these they're gonna do so far. I only know so far about the Denzel Curry, the Grey Days and the Rise Against. Um, so I'll put a link to that also. Right now I have a link just to the soundtrack, so I'm gonna add this one in. This is an indie store exclusive, I should mention. Uh, the record, although it is, it's limited, but it's not indie store exclusive, they're actually making these just for independent record stores. Uh, I'm guessing some comic stores might even be able to cross over and get into these. Some comic stores I know do records. Um, so yeah, just a really interesting concept. But again, what really got me into it was the music. Now I'm probably gonna check out the comics. Just thought it was really cool. This is just a little sample of some of the great new releases out this week. We'll get another video together for our vinyl happy hour next week. So like I said, please make sure you follow us on our social media and like what we're doing here on YouTube as well. Uh, until next week, cheers.